The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Let's see now, where did they put this daughter on this thing? Pay it to, I say, pay attention. Now what, I say, what's the big idea back to me on the noggin with a rolling pin? Clunk enough people and we'll have a nation of lump hands. On the Bahamians, on for bad. To stand up and fight and defend their own Bahamas, then you don't deserve to have it. How can we become the Bahamas we want to be? How can we change the mindsets of our people to respect their individual selves, others, and our nation? How do we solve the problems that plague our nation? How do we become our brothers and sisters keeper? Let's discuss it together and find the solutions. So when you are asked the question, who, who are, are you? You can proudly say, say, I am a Bahamian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, hey yo, we come a long way and we just begun. Come on, lift up your heads to the rising sun and just sing it out loud. I am a Bahamian. Come on, sing it out loud. I am a Bahamian. 242, good evening, Bahamaland. Good evening and welcome to Changing the Mindset, where we review the culture, problems, and society of that which we love and call the Bahamas. On the show, we analyze, review, and look for solutions to those things in our culture and country which prevent us for being the greatest little country in the world. I want to give my special thanks, first of all, to all those persons that contributed to my intro. These include Miss Christina Thompson, affectionately known as Chrissy Love, Mr. Stephen Hanna from What's the Point, Miss April Moss and Jasper Hayward, our young producers, and, of course, my beautiful wife, Miss Chicane Latour, and my niece, Gabrielle Smith. I'd also like to thank Celindon, Bugs Bunny, and Foghorn Leghorn, who all inspire me greatly. But before we begin, and now I would like to give a special shout out to the greatest, most inspirational, motivational, undeniable, splendiferous club of Toastmasters in the Bahamas, the very first Bohemian International Toastmasters Club, Club 1600. I know and appreciate my fellow Toastmasters and brothers are listening in, and I thank them. Again, let me welcome you to this episode of Changing the Mindset, right here on Guardian Talk Radio 96.9 FM, where we have fresh news, smart talk all day and now night. You can join us here on 96.9 FM or stream us live on GuardianTalkRadio.com. You could also like our page on Facebook.com at Changing Mindsets or join the group at Changing the Mindset. And yes, tweet us for all those TWAM fans are changing the mindset, are changing the mind. Now, I would like to also thank, of course, the people we couldn't do the show without, our sponsors of today, which include Empower Media Production Company, where we make music and sound to empower your dreams. You can contact Empower Media at 428-2400 or email at empowermusic at gmail.com or check out their website at empowermediamusic.com. They cater to all your music and sound needs and specialize in weddings and small events. We'd also like to thank t Essentials Business Solutions, where they provide solutions to build dreams and businesses. t Essentials is a bookkeeping, marketing, and e-based administration company. They can be reached at 225-7990 or emailed at t.ssentials at gmail.com. That's t.essentials at gmail.com. Now this week, on Changing the Mindset, we're continuing with our topic of this month, which is education. And just saying the word, I can hear most of the nation just groaning in their bark hearts. <laughs> but before we get into our topic today, I just want to welcome and introduce my gallery of lovely guests. My first guest has been an educator and in the field of education for 45 years. He has taught all age, primary, and secondary schools. He has held the position of teacher, principal, assistant, deputy, and director of education, and also that of permanent secretary. Let me just welcome to Changing the Mindset, Mr. Mark Wilson. Mr. Wilson, say hello to our listening audience. Hello and good evening. My next guest, after transferring in 2011 from Kingsway Academy, 
where she was an honor roll student and a member of the Accelerated Track program, became a member of the Aquinas College family. She was the third place winner in the prestigious Laws of Life essay competition 2012 and was once again a finalist in this year's competition. She was one of the recipients of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Honors Program Award. However, her most proud achievement thus far is being Aquinas College's 2013 valedictorian. I'm glad to welcome you to Changing the Mindset, Ms. Troy Ann Moore. Say good evening to our listening audience. Good evening, Bahamas. And our next lovely guest in the studio with us. Oh, wow. That's, that's a long resume. Okay, okay. Let's have got the time. My next guest was supposed to have been with us for our first show, but unfortunately, you know, she wasn't feeling well, but we're glad that she is doing better and able to join us this evening. She is a recent graduate of the Paces and was on the principal list for six consecutive terms and was awarded highest GPA each time. She has sat and successfully passed not one, not two, not four and five, but ten BGCSEs and is this year's valedictorian of R.M. Bailey Senior High. Please welcome with me, Miss Khadija Hamilton. Say good evening. Good afternoon, Bahamas. And my last, but not least in any way, guest, graduated from St. John's College. Now, you're a giant and I's a red wave, but you know we can get along this evening. <laughs> in 2011, where he was a teacher, cadet for two years. He's beginning his third year at the College of the Bahamas, with a major in secondary education in the field of history and geography. He has served as a teacher's aide at Aquinas College from 2012 to present. And I'd like to welcome you to our show as well, Mr. Rule Strong. Say hello to our listening audience. Good evening, Bahamas. Now, I have before me a gallery of wonderful people. Education in the Bahamas. Education is a very broad topic, and, you know, I don't think an hour is going to be enough time to get into everything. <laughs> but we, we could do what we can. Now, based on our last scores for the last three years, point blank, we have a problem. <laughs> and, and anyone disagree? No, nope. no, no we, we have a problem. And the problem seems to be in those area subjects that are so critical to helping an individual develop into a healthy, capable, and able-bodied individual. And that would be in the areas of mathematics and English, which basically combined helps a person develop into a critically thinking, able to communicate, and ever able to learn individual. Well, you know, growing up in the Catholic system myself, we were always taught about when the Sisters of Charity and uh, Benedictine monks came and how they came and helped to teach the three hours, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Sadly, it seems some of our students missed that and added another R, reading, writing, and robbery. I don't know how that gets <laughs> <laughs> but. But basically, you know, and I believe this to be the heart. If you can read, you can learn anything you want. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. If you can write, you can communicate. Mm -hmm. And if you can do math, you can problem solve and be a critical thinker. Now, basically, based on our scores, you know, everybody is playing the blame game. Some persons say it's the parents. Others say it's the teachers. And I've even heard others say it's the students who are not interested or incapable of learning. <laughs> and in addition to that, that the system is just broken. Now, on our last show, my previous guests from our first show were both educators. And both of them said that they feel that basically it's the fault of the teachers because the teachers are not able to reach the students because they do not take the time to simply identify the type of students that they have so that they're better able to prepare in order so that they can effectively teach their students. Now, Ms. Smart, let me just say, first of all, I'm very proud of you and your accomplishments. Thank you. Thank now, you are a recently graduated student who has done exceptionally well. I had to pause. I'm sorry. I had to take a moment of silence because it, it, your accomplishments blow my mind. I, I, I won't <laughs> lie. And Thank you. I just want to ask you two questions, first of all. Firstly, what was your experience like as a student? And if there's any particular area you feel could be improved from your point of view, what would it be? Well, obviously, my experience as a student had its ups and downs, obviously. But um, for the most part, I enjoyed my t tenure as a student at Aquinas College and at Kingsway. Um, but some pr 
aspects I think we need to change. I feel as though, yes, some of the teachers are not really um, reaching us fully. Um, I feel as though some of the concepts are not really teaching the students and to enlighten us more. But, um, I mean, some areas we have to improve. But overall, I think my time as a student at the high school level was was good and fine. So um, that's all. Okay. All right. Now, to you, Miss Hamilton, and let me just say, because I haven't had an opportunity to say to you, I'm also very proud of your accomplishments as well. Thank you. And I must say, you know, I, I have a soft spot for Aaron Bailey because, you know, <laughs> my mom went to Aaron Bailey. So, you know, faces have a little bit of a soft spot in my heart, but I am still a big red machine man. I ain't going to ever give that up. <laughs> But I want to ask you the same question. What was your experience like as a student? And if there is any particular area you feel that could be improved, what would it be? Well, like Ms. Maud said, um, my time and my tenure in the high school area was at its ups and downs. You know, the 12th grade, yeah, everybody wants to have their fun, do this and do that. But you have to, like, really put, push forward, really prioritize. Um, but I think it was good. It was exceptional, something I wouldn't trade. Um, the areas I really think should be, like like Ms. Maud said, the teachers, they need to find ways, more like ways to get the, get the students' attention, like push more. Some of the teachers really try hard, but others really just, if I can't get to the student once, then that's it. You really have to, like, push because some students aren't as easy catching us others so you really have to like push and get their attention i mean try continue try continue to try that's all i can say well both of you are awesome and excellent students i mean being a valedictorian of your individual schools and also coming from both the government and the private school because i know sometimes persons have this misconception that you know the private school education is different from the government school education, but the last time I checked, you know, the same information same comes yeah. from the same. Ministry of Education. Yeah. So it cannot be the fact that I'm from a private school or government school makes it any better. It has to be basically those individuals. What about your classmates? Do you feel that a lot of them were interested in learning or they just didn't care? Because, you know, a lot of times we say that our young people basically aren't interested. <laughs> Do you feel that that's the truth or that's just a misconception persons have regarding students? I think that's the truth sometimes. I agree. I, that's the I truth. agree. Um, you'll have those who are attentive in class, want to learn, wants to better themselves, further themselves, and then you will have the slackers who just don't really value their education. So yes, you will have those who pay attention, do well, want to succeed, and you'll have those who just do not value their education. So you'll have it both ways. Okay. Now, go ahead. Um, I also agree with Ms. Maud. I think that some students just really don't care. But from my point of view, I think some students just want to fit in because so I've noticed, like, I think, like, being below average is, like, they want to be cool. It's cool to some person. So you want to, some of them just want to fit in. Like some really, really educated people just want to fit in. But you have to like be your own person. You have to show others that this isn't the, this isn't the way to go. But I think the students really just don't care. Now, do you think, because a lot of persons sometimes feel that the student population just, and I am, i probably be written up for this word, they just don't. <laughs> they're incapable of learning. Do you feel that's the case? Um, no, sir. I think everybody has the ability to learn. It's just your mindset. It's just how you think, how you really um, use yourself, how you, how much you really value your education. Everybody has that learning ability. I don't really consider anybody dumb. A dumb person is somebody who has an um, a disability or something. If you are in a regular school, you don't, you don't have a disability, then you're not dumb. Okay. Now, Mr. Wilson, I am saving you for last because you have a wealth of knowledge and experience I really want to dig into tonight. However, before that, Mr. Strong, you're a teacher's aide and an expiring teacher. 
The reality is that male teachers are almost a dying breed in a <laughs> sense. <laughs> I, I've had the opportunity and experience to teach for a few months. And, and I won't tell you, no lie, it's a calling. You mm. have to have that love to be a teacher. Mm. I enjoyed my time, but being honest with myself, it isn't something I could have seen me do in that arena for the rest of my life. Mm. Probably outside of it, yeah. But to be in the classroom, I, I personally couldn't do it. So I'm just asking you, from one male to another, why education? Well, um, I initially wanted to just do history, um, just to be a historian. But when I, when I really thought about it, to just have history and not, you know, impart it on other people who need it, um, I felt the calling to education and also, you know, I figured this was something that big, was bigger than me. Um, if, if I need to do education just to make some significant change in the Bahamas, then that's what I have to do, and that's, what I, that's how I was able to develop the passion for it. Now, you're a teacher. Whether your teacher is late or not, you're a teacher. Yeah. And that's, that's <laughs> what your heart and your calling is. Yeah. Do you find that the students are incapable or difficult to teach? Well, at times, I, I believe some, from what I've observed, you have, there are students, you would find them ev anywhere that are difficult to teach. Um, that's not to say that, that um, they are incapable of learning, but you have some that are difficult to teach. But what, um, I think something that we have to do is to, to meet them where they are, yes. um, to get them to where they need to be. Okay. All right. Now... We're going to, just on the top of the hour, we're going to take our first break. But Mr. Wilson, you have had the opportunity to see this educational system from the good, the bad, the in, and the out. And <laughs> <laughs> basically, persons say that our system is broken. And I just want to ask you, from your experience, or is the system broken? Or has it changed from the vision from 1972 for the copy of the white paper that I have, the educational white paper? Is the system broken, or is it just that the vision of education in this country has changed? Um, neither, in fact. The system is not broken, um, not in my view, um, nor has the vision of education changed. I think you, you made mention earlier that um, two educators on your previous shows indicated that the, the problem is with the teachers. And uh, I have to unfortunately agree with that. Um, first of all, let, let, me, let, let me congratulate these young people. I ought to have done that right at the beginning. Um, it is very heartwarming um, to see our young people um, standing up to the challenge. Uh, this young man said um, sometime that you have to meet the students where they are and work with them from there. Now, in the field of teaching, that takes a great deal of commitment. <laughs> and in my view, I think that is what is lacking in our educational system. Just as this young lady could successfully negotiate 10 BGCSEs in a public school, um, there are some of the conditions are not as favorable as in the independent schools. Um, that means that it can be done in our school system. And so what we, what, what we, what we need is more commitment on the part of teachers to deal with individual students and to deal with the problems that they present in the school system. Okay. Okay, just back from our break. We're going to go pick up our conversation to continue this. You're here with us on Changing the Mindset on Guardian Talk Radio 96.9 FM. Two nights, 
stay at the Treasure Key Resort in Abaco, an airline ticket on Bahamas Air, and a car from a and Auto Rental in Abaco, pick up the Guardian Deal Locator. Fill out the entry form and bring it to the Nassau Guardian. And you can be one of four lucky winners. Look, for it's all about the Abaco giveaway in the Guardian Deal Locator. Inserted every day in Nassau's leading newspaper, the Nassau Guardian. News and views that matter since 1844. Wake up. Weekday mornings, join us for the show that's shaking up Bahamian radio. Morning Blend with Dwight Strong. I must say, you it's all have raised the level of talk shows. I think you have the best show that's going on right now for young people. And I just want to tell you guys you're doing a great job. For national and international news and entertainment, talk and analysis. Um, I'm impressed with the type of show that you're running. With different perspectives from what you may be used to. And this station has really, you know, I think gotten the country to really start thinking about things and stop looking at things from... You know, just some politicians' promises. Morning Blend with Dwight Strawn, weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Guardian Radio 96.9. When are you guys going to be online? But it's time I, I find myself just in my car, just holding on to every last word. I don't have a radio in the office, though. So if I listen to you, I have to listen to you online. We're online, guardiantalkradio.com. Wake up. Did you know that for the low price of $50, you can place a photo, pricing, and contact information in the Guardian Deal Locator for one full month, well, 25 for two weeks? In the Guardian Deal Locator, you can sell cars, boats, trucks, motorbikes, outboard motors, generators, rims, TVs, electronic devices, solar panels, AC units, and the list goes on and on. Do you have a business card? Place it in the Guardian Deal Locator for one month for the low price of $100 or $25 for one week and give potential clients an easy reference to your product information. The Deal Locator, inserted every day in the Bahamas' leading newspaper, the Nassau Guardian. News and views that matter since 1844. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Changing the mindset here on Guardian Talk 96.9 FM, where we stream to the world, and as my fellow co worker says, to the universe on GuardianTalkRadio.com. Now, this session of the show, we have a little area that we call Changing the Mindset Spotlight on the Community, where we highlight the positive things going on in our community. You can email us at changingthemindset at gmail.com if you or anyone you know are doing something positive we can bring to light to help encourage others that the Bahamas is not lost. A lot of persons think that we are hopeless and we're lost, but we're not hopeless. We are the best little country there is in this world. Now with me in studio, I have another one of my special guests who's only gonna be with us for a few moments. Um, this evening, she's sitting in with us and I would like to welcome Miss Felicia Archer, affectionately called the Fire Starter Archer. Say good evening, Miss Archer. Good evening, Bahamas, and good evening, Mr. Todd. It's a pleasure being here this evening. Yes, and it's a pleasure having you. And I know a lot of persons at this time, you should be home sleeping. But you know, I'm glad for our audience that are up with us this evening. Um, Ms. Archer, you're having an event next week, Friday, on the 30th. And just by the look of the fly, it looks to be an exciting event. I, I, I can't ever pronounce that word. you got to help me out with that word. Yeah, so, well, for those of you that... Are, that are not familiar with myself. My name is Felicia Archer, like Mr. Todd said earlier, and I'm the founder of an outreach ministry that is dedicated to serving young people in today's society. The name of the ministry is called Fresh Fire Ministries International, and next week we'll be hosting our third annual National Youth Revival, and it's called Three Nights of Philogio, which is the Greek word for fire. Awesome. The word philogio means, as the flyer states, to ignite set 
on fire and to rekindle. And these services will be under the theme, No More Chains. I must mention that we are showcasing some of the youngest ministers of the gospel here in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Myself, 19 years old. We have Minister Tanya Duncombe, only 24 years old. She's from Word of Life Kingdom Ministries with Pastor Kena Monka. And we also have Minister Melvin Henfield, who's only 21 years old. So therefore, all hope is not lost with our young people. So I encourage all of the young people to come on down. It's going to be at the New Livelihood Baptist Church. It's located on Jerome Avenue in Chesapeake Road, directly opposite AG Electric. And the dates are Wednesday, the 28th of August to Friday, the 30th of August, 7.30 p.m. nightly. Bring your friends, bring your aunties, bring your uncles, because God is going to move by his spirit. Awesome, awesome. And see, I am very proud of you for what you're doing. How long have you been in ministry? Well, I've been in ministry now all my life, but I should say full-time ministry. I've been preaching and and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ and fully sold out. It, this is actually going to make five years. Five years. Wow. Yes, sir. And what inspired you? What inspired you to actually want to go into ministry <coughs> or even to start a program such as this? Well, the thing about it is what really inspired me is first and foremost when I found out who I was and what I was called to do. I feel as though our people in society, there is an identity crisis going on, especially in the body of Christ, where we don't understand our purpose and where we don't understand what we are called to do. Success is the fulfillment of purpose. And what inspired me is after I found out what I was called to do, and I'm like, God, you call me to be an, a prophetess. You call me to be a founder of a, of a foundation you call me to touch and empower and motivate a generation for your honor and for your glory so after i found out my purpose that alone was my inspiration and of course you know my parents having having the right mentors in my life those that those that saw me the way that God sees me, those that looked beyond my flaws, but those who saw the king in me and those that cultivated my gifts. And that is why I am the person that I am today. Filled with so much philosophy. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just, you know, say real quickly again, I'm very proud of you again. And just let the persons know, where is the venue going to be again? Okay. Um, the venue is going to be at the New Lively Hope Baptist Church. It's located on Jerome Avenue in Chesapeake Road, directly opposite AG Electric. The dates again are Wednesday the 28th, the 28th of August to Friday the 30th of August. I myself, I will be speaking also. So uh, I'm looking for the young people to come up because a lot of times we look at our young people and we say, all hope is lost. But look here, there is a changing of the guards that is taking place in the Joshua generation has arise and you you for further information you could look up the event on facebook where underneath fresh fire ministries international you could check up my personal page for underneath felicia archer or you can contact my call center and the cell phone number is 525-6847 and the admission for the event is free so therefore hold come on, on hold down on, hold on hold on hold on, hold on. <laughs> you gotta go back and say that again i don't think most behemoths heard that let me have that moment silent <laughs> what is the call the cost is free. There is no price. Free of charge. Just bring your offer. That's all we asking for. <laughs> when we don't have whereas you know because I understand that people in society they are hungry for the word of God they are hungry to be touched they are hungry for deliverance and for healing but a lot of times you know we tend to put price a price on the gospel of Jesus Christ but like I said the Lord give me provision he will make if the Lord give me a vision he will make provision so all you got to do is come and come with a level of expectancy because I understand that expectancy is the right atmosphere that will cause God's glory to show up and show off that's all you got to do come expecting the unexpected amen a shunda shunda <laughs> should have had a honda shun. now i just want to ask you one quick question and get your input and then you know stay with us a little while don't, don't leave us just yet on education in this country before we let you go who do you feel is responsible for the type of results we've been getting well first and foremost i must say that playing the blame game is a slave mentality say that one more time i don't think playing I the blame game is a slave mentality. I'm tired, and I'm going to be honest with you. I'm tired of seeing students 
pointing fingers at the teachers and teachers pointing students at the directors of education that is a slave mentality and i feel as though it needs to stop now and i could feel the tension at the table but that is my opinion simply because first everyone has a responsibility and a part and a role to play and and when it comes down to the education at the educational system here in the commonwealth of the bahamas the student has a part the teacher has a role and the teacher also has a role to play I feel as though, number one, in any environment that you go into, if you go with a mindset, here's our word, here's our key word. If you go with a mindset to learn, I believe as though you could be in the worst environment ever and still succeed. But it's up to the individual at the end of the day. You could have the worst teacher and might not understand that teacher, but as long as you're willing and able to learn, you will learn. Because I'm sure that you have friends in the class. Say, for example, a lot of times, I am tired of seeing students use this excuse. Oh, the, I, um, the teacher don't get down to my level, or I don't understand the teacher. I'm sure that you have a friend in that class that understands the work. So therefore, if I don't understand the teacher, I'm going to that friend. Hey, look here, Johnny. Show me, sh show me how to get this problem solved. Show me this. Teach me this. It takes effort on on all all parties have to put in effort and work at the end of the day. As long as you're willing and determined that you will succeed, despite of the teacher, despite of the environment, whatever it may be, you will succeed. You know what, Felicia? I'm gonna have to have you back mm -hmm. when we are talking about fire branding. Yes, we sir. We got you a fire brand in here today. <laughs> now. In addition to this event, ladies and gentlemen, I'd also like to shine a quick spotlight on our Toastmasters Club 1600 again for the good work that they're also doing inside the community. Toastmasters has a youth leadership program which empowers young people to become effective communicators and leaders through a workshop style program. The teens will learn to participate and lead group discussions, meetings, organize and present their ideas logically and convincingly and overcome their nervous one nervousness everyone feels when s s speaking before an audience <laughs> and in addition to this this weekend you know we have the second annual Neil Presente who is a beloved Toastmaster that has passed on and moved away from this world is back to school day where you get the back to school supplies a mobile barber bouncing castle pony rides popcorn hot dogs and drinks this Saturday August 24th between 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at Union Village Felicia, thank you so much. Stay with us a little while, you know, we're going to continue our conversation. Now, just before our break, and we're going to open up the lines, basically to dial into the conversation, the numbers are 323-8160 or 323-6232. One of the things my guests from the first show had mentioned, and I myself actually am a witness of this, and the sad part is it's taken me 30 years to actually understand it. It's what type of learner I am. And my guest had suggested that teachers can actually do a very simple test at the start of the semester so that they can determine exactly the type of student that they are teaching, which will enable them to be able to better teach students. I myself personally have learned that I am a visual and a physical learner. So when you're saying something to me, I don't get it. Point blank, I don't get it. I may hear what you're saying, but I don't get it. And sometimes I have to come back and I have to come back and keep asking. And the reason I keep asking is because when you're saying it to me, uh, auditorily wise, I don't get it. But as a student, if I go and I sit and I read that very same textbook, I pick it up. I'm able to understand it. And then I can come back to you as a student. And I can ask you the necessary questions for what I don't understand. And the suggestion was it's a test that's called What's Your Learning Style by Marcia L. Corner that any teacher could actually go online and download. And at the start of the semester, it's something that they can actually do to get a feel of what type of students they have. Um, Mr. Wilson, you've been in this educational field for a number of years. Do you feel that this is something that teachers can actually apply today that would benefit them in the class when it comes to them? And I know it takes a little extra effort, but it would benefit them in helping to understand the type of students they're teaching. Because I think one of the biggest problems we have right now is a lot of the teachers are visual teachers and fail to realize you don't just have a class of visual students. So you feel that the student doesn't pay attention or they're not willing to work, but the simple matter may be the teaching style they're using isn't something that they are wired where they don't understand. 
Well, first of all, Mr. Todd, um, there are various types of teaching styles. And obviously, because different students learn in different ways, um, some of those teaching styles will benefit some students while it will not benefit others. Um, the point I tried to make earlier in my, in my comment and, and the point this young man made was that um, you approach each student as an individual. And therefore, if you, if you have applied one type of teaching style and um, some students have not grasped what you are trying to impart, then you try something else. And you try something else until you find the successful methodology for each single student, each individual student. In, in education, that is called individualization, where you, where you, where you approach each st student as an individual and you find out how you can impart what you are trying to impart to that particular student. Now, that is going to take a lot of actual work on the part of the teachers. That is why I said earlier, it, 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 requires, a, it requires a certain amount of commitment. In fact, it requires a great deal of commitment on the part of the teacher. Um, I'm going to ask both of you young ladies, because now, with the accomplishments that you've made, you have had to have parental support in what you're doing. Yeah. Am I wrong? No, no you're not. Correct. Okay, so tell me, because I don't think a lot of parents understand just how important a role that they actually play in their child's life when it comes to their education. Now, I know a lot of times, you know, parents, some parents think that they may not be able to understand the work. They may feel that, okay, um, I can't read, I can't write myself. But besides this, what role exactly does a parent, or I should say, what role did your parents play when it came to your education, Ms. Hamilton? Well, my parents, they played a, my family played a great role in my success. Um, they first have to be supportive. You have to support your child in everything that he or she does. Um, you also have to be their financial stabil stability. You have to, like, for instance, some parents, they prefer to buy their, their children all the name brand clothing, but when it comes to the textbooks, it's a problem. You have to prioritize, put what's most important first, books, education that's going to get your child ahead, not the Tommy pants or the Clark shoes he or she wears. Also, I think the parents, you have to actually be accountable. You have to make sure that your child check. Even if you can't understand the work, just ensure that the child does the work. Or if you can't understand it, try find somebody who can assist you or can assist the child in helping them in their work. That's what I believe. What about you, Ms. Mott? Well, my parents played a significant role in my success. Um, they didn't only survive, provide financial support, they provided emotional support, especially in this 12th grade when work was hectic and you know got out of hand sometimes but um my parents also instilled in me the value of hard work and showed me what the end results will be that's what a lot of parents have to do to, to their children so when you instill those values and those um ethics in those your children they will produce and they will have interest in the work so my mother always showed me the end results and my father always showed me what the end will be so it really motivated me and gave me inspiration to continue on and strive. Okay, just before we go and take our next break, I want to ask this both to actually you, Mr. Wilson, and actually to you, Mr. Strawn. But first to you, Mr. Strawn. For a lot of parents that say that basically that they are doing the best that they can to provide for their children, they, they don't have time to assist with their children's homework, or worse, they don't understand the homework because they themselves aren't, unable to read or write or they just don't understand the material is there help from a teacher's point of view or are, would teachers are teachers willing to assist parents to do what they can to help work the best they can to get the best results from these students well um see that's the thing that mr wilson just touched on in terms of commitment um you have teachers that think that three o'clock that's it mm -hmm. um but 
you have to realize that I mean a, a true teacher you have to, if you have the passion that you should have for it um you would want to see your students succeed at any cost so if it means that I have to pull someone to the side and say we could stay back this extra hour tell mommy pick you up four o'clock if mommy can't get to you four o'clock if she bogged down and work I'll drop you home um if that's what we have to go through for you to improve yourself that's what we have to go through so it's a matter of the teacher being committed to say um well obviously because of the circumstances your parents don't have time but I'm going to try to go the extra mile and whenever we, I do get together with your parents in meetings and stuff I will encourage them to try to make a way to to make things work okay yeah. just after we come back from this break we're going to continue our conversation here on changing the mindset Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening in, and we'll be back. Let's do this. Whoa! 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 Trendsetters and leaders. Smurf. Yep. We gotta be trendsetters of the world, leaders of the world. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, rise up and take a stand. Represent your line, every woman, every boy, every girl, every man. Trendsetters of the world, leaders of the world. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, rise up and take a stand. Represent your line, every there's woman, There's mealtime, and then there's KFC mealtime. Great food, great memories, and loads of fun. And with the all-new KFC Big Deal, there's something for everyone. The new KFC Big Deal. Eight delicious pieces of our thigh and leg chicken and original. Spicy or barbecue for just $13.99. Add any two family sides for only $4.99. Even a two-liter Pepsi. Great times and great family meals start with KFC. So good. Do you want to win a three-day, two-night stay at the Treasure Key Resort in Abaco? An airline ticket on Bahamas Air? And a car from a Auto Rental in Abaco? Pick up the Guardian deal locator. Fill out the entry form and bring it to the Nassau Guardian. And you can be one of four lucky winners. Look, for it's all about the Abaco giveaway in the Guardian deal locator. Inserted every day in Nassau's leading newspaper, the Nassau Guardian. News and views that matter since 1844. Wake up. Weekday mornings, join us for the show that's shaking up Bahamian radio. Morning Blend with Dwight Strong. I must say, you all have raised a level of talk shows. I think you have the best show that's going on right now for young people. And I just want to tell you guys you're doing a great job. For national and international news and entertainment, talk and analysis. Um, I'm impressed with the type of show that you're running. With different perspectives from what you may be used to. And this station has really, you know, I think, gotten the country to really start thinking about things and stop looking at things from... You know, just from politicians' promises. Morning Blend with Dwight Strawn, weekday mornings from 6 to 9 on Guardian Radio 96.9. When are you guys going to be online? By the time I, I, I find myself just in my car, just holding on to every last word. I don't have a radio in the office, though. If I listen to you, I have to listen to you online. We're online, guardiantalkradio.com. Wake up, it's a new day. Every girl, rise up and take a stand. Represent your line. Every woman, every boy, every girl, every every Bohemian boy, every Bohemian girl. You were blessed to be born in the sweetest country in the world. Our future is limitless. I think they should meet us. We are the future generation of Bohemian leaders, ready to face any challenge. Cause we equipped with the knowledge that was given as we went from kindergarten to college to make our country more better for us with no sacrifices. Ain't no hurricane weather or economical crisis could never damage us permanently. We tough and we mighty, stronger than the 57 year old lignum vitae. We are people of power, it's so easy to see. No one can stop us from being what we are destined to be. We trendsetters of the world, leaders of the world. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl, rise up and take a stand. And we're back. On Changing the Mindset here on Guardian Talk 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk all day and all night. And you can stream us also on GuardianTalkRadio.com or you can dial into the conversation at 323-8160, 323-6232. And I must send out a shout to my nephew, Mr. Ari Smith, for assisting me with getting my guest, Mr. Rule Strong, here this evening. 
Yeah, yeah, Ari. I got you. I got you. <laughs> uh, yes. Now, continuing back with our conversation. And see, a part of what we also want to do on the show, you know, in our last few minutes is also to try to give some suggestions or solutions that persons can actually do now to apply with trying to fix the educational system. Mr. Wilson, as both an educator and someone who's actually been in this field for years, what do you feel that I can say both teachers, parents, and students can actually do to begin working on this problem? Because th this, this is a multi-pronged problem. We can't just blame the teachers. We can't just blame the students. We can't just blame the parents. Because you can have those teachers that can capture a certain portion of the class, but you're still going to have those one or two students that regardless of what they are interested whether it's because of the social background they're coming from. But see, I believe what I was taught a long time ago, it isn't the way you start something, but it's the way you finish it. Yes, you're quite right, Mr. Todd. Um, well, there are a couple of things you can do. First of all, from the parental um, perspective, um, both of the young ladies here mentioned support. And that is the most critical thing that, the, that parents can do, support their children and support their educational endeavors. Uh, it, is, it is necessary for parents to underscore the importance of education. And parents who do that do not have to become teachers. You see, we, we, sometimes, we sometimes talk about um, the role of parents as if they are supposed to be teachers mm -hmm. themselves. We don't expect te parents to be teachers. And many parents have not had the same level of educational opportunities. So they couldn't become teachers. Mm -hmm. But if they are, if they are supportive, um, for example, one, one, one very simple thing is if a, if, a, if a parent insists that a certain portion of your time, a certain portion of the child's time is placed in studies, that is, that, is, that is support sufficient to make a great deal of difference in the success that the child will experience in their educational endeavor. Um, in many instances, um, support will um, manifest itself in, for example, the, in the, the, the type of environment in the home that is conducive to study. Um, if the radio and the television is blasting, obviously you're not <laughs> gonna get much studying done. But if the, if, if the parent who is supportive says, the television goes off, the radio goes off, quiet <coughs> prevails in this house, and you get on with your studies, that is the kind of support that, um, that parents could give. Okay. Um, of course, the obvious um, support is when, they, when there's something happening in the school that impinges upon your child's educational career, mm -hmm. then you have to be present if you are, if you're required to be there. Um, Mr. Strawn, what would you say to teachers going into this semester, this year, after the kind of results that we've seen? And I, I've also heard it said that some teachers have said that, you know, like persons, journalists can determine based on the results exactly what's going on and that, you know, that the students have actually done good. But it's been consistent for the last three years that the results, even if it took a notch up, mm. basically have still basically been within a D mark. And I, I wanted to read this a little earlier to just, you know, indicate what our grade and scale actually means. Because basically, you know, it's amazing that a D is a passing grade. Now, I know basically when I was going to school, D means dead, don't come home, don't call, don't stop by anywhere that looks resembling your home because you ain't gonna see the next day. <laughs> a, knowledge, specific, appropriate, and comprehensive evidence of exceptional comprehensional skills. And what I highlighted on this, it says outstanding high order skills. B, repeats basically the same thing on this, very good high order. C, good high order. And D, skills satisfactory. 
Now, as a teacher, if your student fails, I mean, pending, you know, sickness or the student just, you know, honestly, could not do the work. How do you feel as a teacher? If your student fails, don't you take responsibility for that and feel that is your failure or you feel it's completely on the failure of the student? Well, of course, I, would, I can't say that um, it's, it's not. Uh, part of it is not my failure because I've been, here it is, I've been teaching a student for a year, in some instances, um, two years, three years. Um, so I would have to accept some responsibility. Um, but something that, that I always press on, I, that I always look forward to in, the edu- um, in going into education is that each, each new year, is a time to assess yourself, um, to realize that, yes, there is a problem. Uh, many times teachers don't really, you know, look back and say, okay, let me see what went wrong this year. Let me put this down on the paper. Um, when I get into the classroom in September, let me see the new group of students that I'm dealing with. Let me see if any of that, anything resembles what I have on this paper, and then let me move forward. Uh, my dear young valedictorians, and I can say that gladly, <laughs> what would you suggest or to encourage to your fellow students that are basically coming up in the system now? What, what would you say to them if you had an opportunity to speak to them and encourage them as they are continuing to pursue their educational pursuits? Well, I'll say to them to keep on striving, to keep P- pushing forward because okay I was saying to them to keep on striving keep pushing forward do not allow your faith in what you're doing to waver in spite of what the hardships and circumstances might be even in your home but you just keep doing well because education is the gateway out of poverty to do well and then better yourself and further yourself so just get your priorities in order Keep focus, maintain, know, know what you're in school for, and that is to receive a good education and to make your parents and mostly yourself proud and to keep God first in your studies. Um, I would encourage you guys to just keep pressing forward. Um, also to find your areas, like characterize yourself. Find your areas where you are weak. Find areas where you are strong and work on those weak areas rather than, okay, if I know I'm good at maths, focus on my time on maths. Find the areas you're poor at and work on that. Also, the press forward, try, find where your passion lies, continue to strive, don't let nobody put you down, just continue to do your best. All right, thank you. Now... I'm just going to hit on this three-prong stick real quick because, you know, it's parents, it's students, and it's teachers. At the end of the day, all are involved. So I'll say to my teachers listening in, if you're in the profession and you chose it and nobody put a gun to your head, (laughs) do the work. It may require you to put in a little extra time, but at the end of the day, it's not just about a salary. It's about our country, it's about the children performing, it's about the children getting the good grades, and then at the end of the day, those children that you put that extra time in do not forget you. Mm -hmm. I cannot say one student, regardless of how ridiculous they may have been in my class, when I see them on the street, they are still respectful, and they still remember, and they are still grateful and thankful, even though I only had a short opportunity to put into their lives. Parents, work with the teachers. Teach and train your children home that when they go to school, they ain't going to party and caring like wild animals and act a fool. They go in to learn, which means on your part, you have to ensure that your children have food in their system. They can't be going hungry. And if you don't know as parents, that's child abuse. If you send your child to school without food, it's child abuse. And you can be locked up for it. It's in the law. Ensure that they have the supplies they need. They don't need to have the best shoes, the best bag, and all the rest of that. They need to have their education in their head so they can get a job. Three, we are in a technological age. You can get your teacher's email or cell phone number Mm -hmm. to keep up to date with what is going on with your child. If you can't be there physically, 
Make sure that teachers see an email or a text from you on a regular basis to find out what is going on with your student and child that you place in the teacher's care. And to students, go to school, learn, get a good education. Don't mind the fact that they look easy and a lot of persons may seem to go off and come back home and that their papers don't mean nothing. That ain't the truth. God give you the opportunity to learn, learn. Learn to the best of your ability because you don't know where your education is going to take you. It may take you away from home, but at some time it may bring you back. Mm. Mr. Wilson, you have any words to add to this before we close up? Yes. Um, uh, a great philosopher once said that education is the process by which the eye of the soul faces reality. Now, I don't, want to, I don't want to come off as being heavy, but the reality is that we have certain realities in this country, in every country, mm -hmm. and those realities are resolved by the men and women who live in the country. And one of the things that we do, one of the things that education does, is it trains up the young people to come to grips with that reality. Mm -hmm. And so where us old people leave off, the young people take over. And it's very important that young people understand that they have a role. Sometimes it is, it is, it is quite possible to, to feel, well, you know, I have no role in this thing. You know, I, I'm here and I, I just as well cool out and have a good time. But the reality is that you do have a role. And um, it sneaks upon you. It comes faster than you, Im you can imagine. And that is what education does. It prepares you for that role as adult individuals. And it is perhaps the most important thing that a young person can do to realize that, look, I have a role to play. I have an objective to achieve. And it is this educational process that I'm undergoing at the moment that will allow me to achieve that. And it is the most important thing that you can do in your life. Okay. Thank you so much. I want to say thank you to all of our guests, our listening audience. And just to let you know, music this evening was brought to you by Mr. Alvin Smith, known as Papa Smurf, Miss Rondell and Brista, and up-and-coming artists. Their music will be displayed on Changing the Mindset's website. And our soon-to-be featured artist, the next show, Mr. Jonathan Farrington, will be carrying out with his music. We'd also like to thank our sponsors this evening, which include Empower Media, where we empower your dreams, and T-Central's Business Solutions, where we build dreams and businesses. Please keep these words in mind as we depart. If you want to change your reality... You must first begin by changing your mindset. You have a good night, Bahamas. People waste their time searching for love and security. People dying, babies crying, mamas trying, but no one is there. Hate is rising, crime is multiplying, I just can't deny it, I'm so sick and tired of it.